Welcome to the journey of innovation, where one spark can change the world. Ever taken a moment to really look closely at an old-fashioned light bulb? I mean, really examine it? Not the modern LED kind we're so used to now, but the classic glass globe, the kind with that delicate, almost magical tiny wire nestled inside. It's a piece of history right there. When you flip the switch, completing the circuit, electricity surges through that wire. It's called a filament, a carefully chosen material designed for this very purpose, until it glows with an intense heat, radiating light, and lighting up the room with a warm, inviting glow. It's a simple yet elegant transformation of energy. This seemingly simple idea, harnessing the power of electricity to create light, fundamentally changed the world, letting us extend our days, enabling us to work, create, and, and play long after the sun dips below the horizon. It revolutionized productivity and leisure. But the brilliant Thomas Edison, ever the keen observer, noticed something odd, something that didn't quite fit the expected behavior. A peculiar dark stain, almost like a shadow, mysteriously appeared on one side of the bulb's glass, marring its clarity. This only happened after it ran for a while, after hours of illumination. The longer it was used, the more pronounced the stain became. This strange phenomenon was eventually called the Edison Effect, a label for something not yet understood. It was a complete mystery at the time, a puzzle that intrigued scientists and engineers alike. What was causing this darkening? Later, with the advent of more sophisticated tools, scientists discovered that the intensely hot filament was actually releasing tiny, almost unimaginably small, invisible particles, electrons, the fundamental carriers of electrical charge. In the carefully created vacuum inside the bulb, where air has been removed to prevent the filament from burning up, these electrons, energized by the heat, could actually fly off the surface of the filament, escaping its atomic bonds, and zip freely through the seemingly empty space within the glass enclosure. This unexpected flow of electrons, this invisible current, was the secret behind the enigmatic Edison effect. That simple glass bulb, more than just a source of illumination, wasn't just a light source, it was, in a very real sense, the ancestor of all modern electronics the seed from which countless innovations would sprout. It demonstrated to the world that we could, in fact, control the movement of electrons in a vacuum, manipulating these tiny particles to achieve specific effects. This groundbreaking concept paved the way for radios, allowing us to transmit voices and music across vast distances, televisions, bringing moving images and stories into our homes, and even the first computers, those room-sized behemoths that laid the foundation for the digital age. The incredible journey from a simple glowing wire to a complex thinking machine, capable of performing calculations and processing information, started right there with that spark of curiosity and ingenuity inside that seemingly insignificant little glass bubble. So, next time you happen to see a vintage bulb, perhaps in a museum or an antique shop, take a closer look and remember it wasn't just a source of light, it sparked a technological revolution that continues to shape our world today. Science is truly everywhere, hidden in the most unexpected places. Scientists, driven by an insatiable curiosity, began to explore the behavior of electrons in different environments. They discovered something remarkable. When a wire was heated to a high temperature within a vacuum, electrons could actually boil off its surface. This phenomenon, known as thermionic emission, was a pivotal observation. What could they do with that? How could this newfound understanding of electron behavior be harnessed and put to practical use? The possibility seemed endless, yet the path forward remained unclear. In 1904, John Ambrose Fleming, a British electrical engineer and physicist, took a significant step. He ingeniously added a metal plate, also known as an anode, to a standard light bulb. This seemingly simple modification resulted in the creation of the first vacuum tube, a device that would revolutionize electronics. When the plate was positively charged, acting as an attractor, electrons, being negatively charged, leaped eagerly from the heated filament towards the positively charged plate, creating a one-way street for electricity, a controlled flow of electrons in a single direction. This groundbreaking device, which Fleming called a diode, possessed the remarkable ability to turn alternating current, AC, 
which flows in both directions, into direct current, DC, which flows in only one direction. This process is known as rectification. Think of it as a one-way valve for electricity, allowing current to flow freely in one direction while blocking it in the opposite direction. This simple yet elegant function, the ability to control the flow of electrons, made the vacuum tube the first true electronic component, a fundamental building block for future technologies. Engineers, recognizing the immense potential of Fleming's invention, tirelessly improved the design, refining the shape of the plate into a cylinder to maximize its surface area, enabling it to catch more electrons and handle significantly more power, thus increasing the tube's efficiency and performance. The vacuum tube, once a mere laboratory curiosity, rapidly evolved into a practical and indispensable tool for a wide range of applications. It was the key that unlocked a new world of technology, paving the way for advancements in radio, telecommunications, and countless other fields. Without this humble device, the electronic age as we know it might never have started, or at least would have been significantly delayed. One small idea, born from scientific inquiry, built on another, each step contributing to a greater understanding and ultimately to technological progress, leading to incredible innovations that have shaped the modern world and continue to drive us forward. From a stained light bulb, an everyday object, to the very heart of electronics, a complex and intricate system that powers our lives, consider that remarkable journey. Science, at its core, builds on curiosity, the relentless pursuit of knowledge, and the unwavering desire to understand the world around us. Controlling electricity, harnessing its raw power, is one thing. It's about directing the flow, managing the current, and ensuring it does what you need it to do. But making it stronger, amplifying its effect, was a completely new challenge. It required a different approach, a deeper understanding of how electricity behaves. Early electronics, in their nascent stages, desperately needed a way to boost weak signals, to take a whisper and turn it into a shout. This was crucial for many emerging technologies. Signals like distant radio waves, traveling vast distances and arriving as faint echoes needed to be amplified to be heard. The same was true for voices traveling on long phone lines, which would weaken and fade over distance, making conversations difficult to impossible. Before the advent of vacuum tubes, engineers relied on relays, clunky mechanical devices. These were essentially mechanical switches that were slow, unreliable, and incredibly noisy, making them far from ideal. Relays simply couldn't handle the complex and nuanced signals of human voices, the subtle inflections and tones that make up speech. The same limitations applied to music, with its rich harmonies and dynamic range. Relays were too crude to capture its beauty. Enter the vacuum tube, ready for its next act a performance that would revolutionize the world of electronics. That act was amplification, the ability to take a weak signal and make it significantly stronger. In 1906, Lee DeForest made a pivotal addition, adding a third part, a grid, to the existing vacuum tube design. This innovation resulted in the creation of the triode, a three-electrode tube that would change everything. This grid acted as a gatekeeper, a control valve for the flow of electrons within the vacuum tube, it allowed even a tiny signal, a minuscule electrical impulse, to control a much larger current, unleashing a powerful flow of electrons. A small voltage applied to the grid, a seemingly insignificant input, could create a huge change, a dramatic shift in the electrical landscape within the tube. This resulted in a massive change in the current flowing through the tube, a transformation of energy. The triode, therefore, could amplify weak signals boosting their strength and making them usable. This process made them strong and clear, allowing for reliable communication and signal processing. This groundbreaking invention made modern electronics as we know it possible, paving the way for countless innovations. The vacuum tube could now amplify, it could take the quietest whisper and turn it into a roar. It was pure scientific magic, a feat of engineering that defied expectations. From the faintest signals, barely perceptible to the human ear, to booming broadcasts that could reach across continents, the possibilities were endless. Amplification changed everything, transforming the way we communicate, entertain ourselves, and interact with the world. The world was about to get a lot louder, 
filled with music, voices, and information traveling further than ever before. And it was about to become far more connected, as people could communicate across vast distances with ease. Amplification made the world feel smaller. Before triode tubes, long-distance phone calls faded out after a few hundred miles. With vacuum tube amplifiers, telephone companies built repeater stations to boost signals coast to coast. In 1915, the first transcontinental phone call connected New York to San Francisco, thanks to those little glass tubes. The same technology transformed radio, sending signals across continents and oceans. Vacuum tubes became the backbone of communication and entertainment, filling radios, TVs, and early music equipment. From a light bulb side effect to a global network, vacuum tubes connected people everywhere. While vacuum tubes powered analog signals, a new revolution was brewing, digital logic. In 1937, Claude Shannon showed that Boolean algebra, true-false, on-off, could be built with electrical switches, at the same time, George Stibitz used relays and bulbs to create a simple binary calculator at his kitchen table. Switches became ones and zeros, light bulbs showed the answers. This was the birth of digital circuits. Math done with electricity, not gears. Complex problems could be broken into simple yes or no questions, answered by circuits. The light bulbs weren't just for show, they displayed the logic inside. This humble box of relays and bulbs proved digital thinking was possible the digital age had begun. Stibitz's kitchen table gadget was just the start. Early computers used hundreds of relays, mechanical, slow, and noisy. Engineers needed a faster, more reliable switch. The answer, the vacuum tube triode, now used as a lightning-fast electronic switch. By applying voltage to the grid, you could turn the flow of electrons on or off, zero or one. Vacuum tubes could switch thousands of times per second, far outpacing relays. The stage was set for the first truly electronic computer. The humble vacuum tube was about to get its biggest job yet. Break time point five. All these ideas came together in ENIAC, the first general purpose, programmable electronic computer, completed in 1945. ENIAC was a monster. It filled a room, weighed over 30 tons, and used nearly 18,000 vacuum tubes. It needed enough electricity to power a small town and generated massive heat. ENIAC could perform about 5,000 additions per second, a thousand times faster than any mechanical calculator. Its first jobs were for the US military, solving complex math problems in minutes. ENIAC was a true giant brain, built from an army of glowing glass tubes. Each tube was a descendant of that first light bulb, glowing as it worked. Walking into the ENIAC room meant seeing thousands of tubes silently flipping on and off, processing numbers at incredible speeds. It was the physical embodiment of the digital revolution. From a glowing filament to a room-sized computer controlling electrons changed everything. The digital age had arrived. ENIAC and other vacuum tube computers had big problems. With nearly 18,000 tubes, failures were constant. One bad tube could stop the whole machine. The longest ENIAC ever ran without a failure was just under five days. These computers were enormous, power-hungry, and needed constant maintenance. Only governments and big institutions could afford them. The heat from all those tubes caused even more breakdowns. They were fragile glass giants, pioneers, but far from perfect. It was clear for computers to become smaller, cheaper, and reliable, a new kind of switch was needed. The era of the light bulb computer was groundbreaking, but short-lived. The solution arrived in 1947 at Bell Labs, the transistor. Invented by John Bardeen, Walter Bratting, and William Shockley, the transistor could switch and amplify signals without glass, filaments, or vacuums. It used a tiny piece of semiconductor, like silicon, to control current. No moving parts, no burning out, just solid, reliable switching. The transistor was tiny, used little power, and produced almost no heat. Computers built with transistors were smaller, faster, cheaper, and far more dependable. By the late 1950s, transistors replaced vacuum tubes in radios, computers, and more. This led to integrated circuits, millions of transistors on a single chip. That's the technology inside your phone and laptop today. The age of the giant, glowing computer was over. The silent, powerful world of solid-state electronics had begun, 
and it all started with a strange stain inside a light bulb. Break time point, Fop. Before you go, let's keep the spark of innovation alive, together. If you enjoyed this journey from glowing bulbs to tiny transistors, hit that subscribe button right now. Give this video a thumbs up to let us know you loved it, and drop a comment below. Which invention blew your mind the most? We'd love to hear your thoughts and favorite moments. Don't forget to share this video with your friends. Spread the wonder of technology and history far and wide. And for those who want to go the extra mile, join our channel membership for exclusive, behind-the-scenes content, early access, and a shiny badge that shows you're part of the inner circle. Your support helps us create more amazing videos, so thank you for joining us on this journey of innovation and discovery. We couldn't do it without you. Stay curious, stay inspired, and we'll see you next time on another journey through the wonders of innovation. Break time in point five. Thank you for watching. This has been Kimlud Media.